Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 19th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that you are happy in Jesus today and you are ready for the Word of God. Our text this morning is going to come from Matthew, and we're going to look at chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. Now, this is a story being told by Matthew about Jesus, but we're going to pay attention very closely to the words of Jesus. So let's pick up in verse 5. Now, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now, a centurion was a Roman soldier, and not just a Roman soldier, but he had about a hundred soldiers that worked underneath him. So he played a significant role in the Roman government. Not the Jewish government, the Roman government. He was a Gentile. He was a pagan. And yet it says, when Jesus came into Capernaum, there came unto him this Roman centurion, this soldier, and he besought the Lord, saying, My servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. That simply means paralyzed. So he has a servant at home who is paralytic, and he's grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto the Roman centurion, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. Now this is the King of kings and Lord of lords, friends. This is the creator of the entire universe. This is the one that knows the hearts and minds of all men. And yet he marvels. You could almost say he is surprised by the faith shown by this Roman centurion. And so it says, Jesus marveled and said unto them that followed all the Jewish people around him. Jesus looks at them and says, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Now, could you imagine standing there as a Jew and Jesus is telling these Jewish people, look, you guys think that you're okay. You think that you have faith. You think that your relationship is right with God, but you have much to learn and you could learn it from someone like this Roman centurion. Can you imagine how that would hit them? how they would take that, how belittled they might feel, and how angry they might become? Well, Jesus continues in verse 11. He says, I say unto you, many shall come from the east and the west, and they shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus is talking about Jewish fathers here. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are highly honored among the Jewish people. And he says, it's not you that's going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's going to be people coming from the east and people coming from the west. Well, who's in the east and the west? Pagans, Gentiles. And Jesus says, it is these who will sit down with your fathers, with your heroes of faith. The Gentiles will sit with them. But what about the children of the kingdom, you might ask? Well, look at verse 12. The children of the kingdom, the Jewish people at that time, they shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, this may be very alarming to the common Jewish people who are standing there, to the 12 disciples who are standing there, but to the Jewish leaders, you might be able to understand now what drove them to such fury, hatred, wrath and anger in wanting to kill Jesus. He's going against everything that they believe, and he's attacking them at their very core.
but he's only doing it because he loves them. He wants them to see the truth about themselves. That just because they are from a bloodline doesn't necessarily mean that they have entrance into the kingdom. Doesn't necessarily mean that they are accepted by the Father and that he sees and finds approval in the way that they're living their lives. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, look, the children of the kingdom, the Jewish people shall be cast into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, now let's fast forward real quick, 2,000 years. Who do you think Jesus would say that to today? Jesus would look out at the world as we know it and he will say, all those people that you do not accept, all those people who you think are so evil, Many of them are the ones who are going to sit down in my kingdom in a state of peace and rest. But you who occupy the church, who think you've got it all figured out, you're going to spend your days in outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Just like this message applied to those Jewish religious people long ago, so does it apply to those Christian religious people We have today who, when everything is going right, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yeah, they're a Christian, but you back them into the corner and they're going to come out fighting like a bear and they'll attack you and rip you to pieces. I've literally been on the phone with people who were telling me how full of the spirit they are. As soon as we disagree about something, they hang up the phone on me. They become so violent and angry, they have viciously attacked me verbally. Now, friends, they can say what they want, and I'm only doing what the Bible says. I'm judging them by the fruit that they bear, which we talked about yesterday is the things that come out of their mouth. You can't be full of the Spirit of God like that and treat someone like that. You may disagree with someone. You certainly have that right. But it never means that you should attack them. It never means that you should allow your temperature to raise, your blood level to increase. Remain calm, gentle, kind, loving, caring, and patient with others. And that's what Jesus means for us to take out of this story. You see, he said in Matthew chapter 7, one chapter earlier, many will say to me in that day, Lord, look at the great things that we've done. We've done supernatural works in your name. We've performed miracles in your name. We've cast out demons in your name. And yet he's going to look at them and say, I never knew you. The power was in my name, but there was nothing about you that represented me. And so he says with with a strong warning, the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus finishes and says unto the centurion, this Roman pagan, go thy way. And as you have believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Friend, it would not surprise me when we get to the kingdom if we do not rub shoulders, if we're not able to sit down and talk with this Roman centurion. You see, there are a lot of people that we think are going to be there, and they're not. And there are a lot of people that we don't think are going to be there, and they are. It doesn't matter race. It doesn't matter creed. It doesn't matter color. It doesn't matter nationality. It all depends upon one thing. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus and the work that he performed on Calvary? for the salvation of your sin. So let's close with this today, friends. Let's be very careful about looking at others and evaluating, judging, spending our time nitpicking their lives and let us spend all the time nitpicking our own lives, judging ourselves, evaluating and examining ourselves because surely we don't want to fall into the lot of those of the children of the kingdom that are cast into outer darkness. I would much rather be one who came from the east, who came from the west, but trusted in Jesus as the sole provider of my salvation and live my life according to his will, his rule, and his way. And I'm sure you would too, his friends. Well, I'm so thankful that you're here this morning. I pray that the word of God has blessed you has enabled you and readied you for the battle that you're going to face today. 
And I pray that no matter how severe that battle is for you today, that you will walk in joy and peace and righteousness that only comes from Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.